stage so oh, yeah that's the thing okay stage six again let's check it out Crystal Palace Mall. I love how people actually have a bigger role. They're not just bosses you fight once and then that's it and never see them again. They're like all over this game. You're chasing them all over the game. That, that's that's kind of cool. The music's pretty cool. It doesn't sound Ninja Turtle-y. Like, this sounds like something I would find in, maybe, Double Dragon? Double, Double Dragon Neon or something? Or... I don't know. Just Konami has its own... ...specific style, you know what I mean? I'm not saying the music sounds bad, it is pretty kicking tunes, it's just... It's like, you know, Konami had their way. One thing I noticed is that, in this game, when you're doing the throws, you gotta watch out, because the other foot soldiers can still punch you while you're doing the throw. So you can't just do the, that 3D throw all the time, because whoever's around you might still put, like, like that, for example. They'll still punch you while you're doing it. Oh shit, the knucklehead. Oh fuck. Oh my god. Jeez, I am bad at fighting this thing. Now watch out, there's a second one somewhere. You see, look at that, they attack you while you're... There you go. There you go, at least I'll have that full for the next time. I love the extra environments and everything. It's just, I don't know, this game is just so much fun. And this game is perfect for anyone that actually grew up during the Turtle era. Like, I'm kind of curious about the younger generation, younger kids, and everything. Sometimes these beat-em-ups aren't, like, for the people that didn't grow up during that era. Um, someone told me that, uh, or I saw on the mess, on the forum, that their kid watch their play the game so they wanted to play so yeah yeah sure you can play but after a couple of levels the kid was already kind of bored because you know it's the repetitive nature of these beat em up games that we're used to oh fuck yeah, hit them before they because you can't even get close they're swinging that shit around yeah but anyways, like, this game is perfect for someone my age that actually grew up during the era of the Turtles when they were on TV. Because I could name, like, every fucking reference and almost every character and toy and whatever in this game so far. Like, this game is perfect, man. This game literally is, like, the love letter to the Turtle fans and people that grew up during that era. Jeez, actually survived that. Now, originally one of the frogs was there, but I guess that only happens on the first playthrough. But I got three of the four frogs. We gotta find the, the fourth one. Oh god, you... Like, this part, this part reminds me of Double Dragon for some reason. Okay, let's just... Awesome. Next floor, more foot. Oh god, another knucklehead. Actually, I can just use that and destroy it. There we go. Awesome. Wow, my combos are all the way up to... Oh, Jesus. Someone gotta clean up that popcorn, yo. 
Oh god, I love that's reference to the yeah, the first episode, right? Where Master Splinter, and it's so weird because it was thanks to the stupid cartoon that I thought that sushi was gross because the turtles didn't like sushi. Splinter did, but they were like, "Ew, how can you eat raw fish? Yuck!" You know what I mean? So I always thought the sushi was something gross until I until I actually, you know, tried sushi when I was older. And then I was like, "Hey, this shit ain't bad." So thanks a lot, turtles, for uh, denying me sushi during my youth. Oh, here we go. This is Tempestra. Behold, the might of Tempestra. It's the dame of games. You, oh, God. Now, it is ironic that I'm using Leo because his episode was actually about Leonardo, like, playing this game. The Tempestra arcade game. And he got, like, super obsessed over it. And I don't understand how Tempestra came to life somehow, but she did. And Leo had to face that. Now the thing is, I don't remember where where they were playing this, if they played it, because I don't remember the turtles ever being in the mall. But then at the same time, I don't remember if maybe they were playing the arcade game in the mall, or the store or something, like... I have to watch that again. But yeah, Tempestro was actually in two episodes, her premiere episode, and like this villain team-up episode. Now these guys are of course Toka and Razar from The Secret of the Ooze. And they got much better design and color and detail here. I'm thinking the bad breath thing is a reference to like the movie where they were. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh! Oh shit, I can't talk now. Obviously easier with a second player. Okay, let's attack her and then get the fuck out of here before she does- Ugh, before she does that. Dear God. Oh, jeez. I like how that even attacks- Oh, Jesus. Oh, God! I'll take these guys down. These guys have very attacks that- like, it makes them tough to fight together because they're just so varied, and they really get into each other's way. Okay, there we go. We're almost there. We're almost there, guys. I'm gonna save the super for her. Oh, the damn... damn smoke. The hard part is that it stays there for a while, you know what I mean? It doesn't go away. Okay. You're toast. Right, turtles. No. Ugh. Here we go. We Looks got it. Like another victory to the point of the good. Cowabunga! Man, so epic. So fucking epic, guys. Yeah, that's Krang's body. Like, why was his body even... Another missing robot piece? What a shocker. I, I don't understand why Krang was disassembled to begin with. What the fucking hell? Like, what's going on? Okay, so now we can go... Now we can go to the next one, even though I don't know where to go now. Because this is special request, collect all VHS tapes per Vernon Fenwick. You've got to find my VHS tapes. Okay. Uh, 